Hi, uh, my name is Pooja Arshnapali. I'm the owner of The Novus, and I help businesses use social media as a way to establish themselves as an expertise. And I'm here to present five ChatGPT prompts you can use to simplify your content creation. So I would say social media has been prevalent, uh, at least especially during the pandemic, the need for social media has increased. Um, it's a good way to get your name out there. However, it does come with a cost, and that cost is it's very time consuming. And it is for many reasons. So the first is you don't really know what to post. You don't really know what converts or gets people to click or meet one of your goals. There are too many trends to keep track of. <coughs> Especially with organic social media, it's, it's really hard to see the return on investment right off the bat because, so sh well, specifically for organic social media, it's a long-term investment. So it can be hard to consistently post or be able to post consistently and feel like you're not getting what you got, what you spent your money on, or you spent your time on. And the last thing is lack of fun. So if you're starting out, you may not be able to afford to hire someone right off the bat. And if you are able to afford to hire someone, you also run the risk of them not being a good fit for your business. So here is where ChatGBT comes into place. In simpler terms, um, ChatGPT is an AI chat box and can understand human language and responds to the prompts you feed it. But let me first give you an introduction or a demo so you can understand what this definition actually means. So if you've never um, created an account in ChatGPT, all you really have to do is can everyone see, is it? Is this, can you see, is this legible? Yeah. For, okay. So if you just Google chat GBT, it should be the first link. And the company is called OpenAI. So that's the company that owns chat GBT. And you can just create an account and it is for free. And once you create an account, you should be able to see an interface similar to this. However, mine, I have the paid version, so you may not get access to the newest versions, but everything else should be similar. So within the interface, you can see that right here, you see a send a message. This is where you'll be putting all of your prompts or putting all of your messages that you want to, you want ChatGPT to respond to. So let me first create a sample I'm just creating a very simple prompt, which is provide three recipes. And I'm, I'm gonna put that in the chat and like, let's see res what response we get from it. Okay, so j just by saying provide three recipes, within a matter of seconds, ChatGPT provided three different recipes the instructions, ingredients, and um, the directions on how to prepare it. So another part of ChatGPT is the different tabs. You can see right here on the black side, there's a lot of different tabs. Um, so whenever you cr create a new chat, you're starting a new conversation with ChatGPT. So this is one good best practice is if you're having a certain topic, um, make sure that you have it with that certain conversation. So, for example, if I am a marketer, I would want to have all my marketing campaigns into one conversation. And if I was wanting to like create recipes, I would have that in a different conversation. With every, with every prompt that you provide, you will see that there's like a, a thumbs up and a thumbs down, 
and you can give feedback to every prompt that ChatGPT has. And so if you are putting any type of prompt, um, you may not get the best response because every single prompt that you uh, provide ChatGPT, you have the option to tailor it and you just may not be able to get the best response as possible. So there's a lot of things that ChatGPT can help with. Um, here are a couple of things. It can streamline workflows by creating very, template, very boilerplate templates. It can help with content creation, customer service, lead generation, and a lot more. However, it does come with a caveat. I think that we should um, use ChatGPT as a tool um, and and um, it should not be the, wet, the one size fits all solution. So if you j create a post with ChatGPT, that shouldn't be the end of your post. Um, I would say ChatGPT eliminates the rough draft of your process, so you'll never be starting from scratch. So, here, so here's the outline that we're gonna be covering is the first is we're gonna figure out how to find your target audience, how to generate content ideas, how to create engaging content, how to write in your tone of voice, and then how to create a content calendar. <coughs> but before we even um, start on the prompts, I'm gonna give you a couple of tips on how to structure your prompts so you're getting the best responses possible. So there are three things when it comes to structuring your prompts. It must be direct, it must be easy to understand, and it must be specific. So I'm gonna give an example. I have three different examples and we're gonna test out each prompt. And it's starting from very general to very specific and then we're gonna see the types of response we get based on each prompt that we put into ChatGPT. So, okay. The first prompt reads, provide five social media posts about coaching. I'm gonna put this in the chat and let's see what response we get. Okay, so, from this prompt, we have five different posts. I'm just gonna read out the first post. Um, just, yeah, I'm just gonna read out the first post. So the first post reads, ready to unlock your full potential. Coaching is the key. Discover your strengths, set goals, and achieve greatness with personalized coaching sessions. Let's embark on this transform transformational journey together. Hashtag coaching, hashtag personal growth, hashtag success. So when it comes to social media, I would say that this, this type of uh, content is very short, and especially if you're going for like a LinkedIn post, and maybe you may need to have more context to what you're trying to say. So I want to first increase the length, the word length of the social media post. And another thing is for coaching, there's so many different coaches out there and I want to specify what type of coach um, we're gonna be focusing on. So for the next prompt, it reads, provide five social media posts about business coaching, and then in parentheses, 150 words for each caption. And then just keep in mind that the parentheses, like I've tested it out, you don't necessarily need the parentheses for ChatGPT to understand what you're saying. It's more for my own doing so I can understand, um, I can separate, because whenever you put too many like directions, it can be complicated, so it's more for formatting um, issues. So I'm gonna put the second prompt in the chat. So you can see it's a little bit lengthier. I'm just gonna read out the fourth post. 
In today's fast-paced business world, adaption and growth are essential. As a business coach, I specialize in helping companies develop re <coughs> resilience, refine their strengths, and boost their bottom line. Let's connect to explore how we can drive your business forward in an ever-changing marketplace. Hashtag business coaching, hashtag str strategy consulting, hashtag corporate growth. So you can see it's a little bit more specified and, this, and the problems that this business coach is talking about is a little bit more specific compared to just, just coaching. So th the next prompt that I have, I would say within business coaching, uh, from someone who's just starting out, their problems may be very different from someone who, is, who has been uh, in five plus years in business. So I'm gonna make it a little bit more specific and I'm gonna target small businesses who wanna scale their business from zero to 5K a month in sales. Yeah. <coughs> so I'm gonna copy and paste this and put this in the chat. Okay, so I'm gonna read the first, the first post. Scaling from zero to 5K a month may, be, may seem daunting, but with the right guidance, it's achievable. Our business coaching program is tailored to empower small businesses with strategies for growth, from marketing tactics to financial management. Let's embark on this journey together and watch your sales soar. Hashtag small business success, hashtag sales growth, hashtag business coaching. So you can see like from the first post that we provided to the last mm -hmm. post, um, the more specific you are with in your prompts, the better responses you're gonna get from, from ChatGPT. Is there any questions so far of what we've covered? How did you work with plagiarism? And maybe I'm dating myself or something, but <coughs> I grew up in an era where we had to always know how to find your source and we always knew how the right information in it to be producing the information that then is being disseminated to the masses. So, okay, so the question was... So what do you mean that the AI actually is ethical, right? Okay, so uh, the question um, was how does this, how does ChatGPT, um, is it... Usually, I'm, I'm curious, right? So for me, <coughs> when I think about social media posts, I'm writing original content. Yep. What I'm saying is, when, when if AI is generating this information, like, how is, is it being fact, is there a fact finder on this? Like, how, how do people know that if you use this, that it's going to create accurate results? How do they know that's okay. being disseminated? So the question is, <laughs> how is ChatGPT fact checking their responses to make sure that nothing is getting plagiarized? or we're not like, yeah, it's well, not getting. using this, this content that, that is being created that is not original content, because you're saying use it as a tool. Yeah. I get that, right? But there's some people that would not use this as a tool, they would just use what is spit out. But yeah. So how does that work? So I think when it comes to plagiarism, for, for um, okay, so when it comes to plagiarism, there are different, like, I know like Grammarly like checks for plagiarism, especially like when, I know like there's a lot of people in high school who are using ChatGPT to like create, to create like their um, different um, research papers and they're just using that. I, I don't know like, I know that there's different ways to check for plagiarism. I know Grammarly does that as well. I just don't know if like, well, let me ask yeah. You. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, so when it comes to like checking sources with ChatGPT, one way is to ask <coughs> ChatGPT what sources they use to provide the content. And usually from there, you can tell if ChatGPT made it up because some of the like links may not actually be an actual link. Um, versus like you, versus like you going and like if they provide you a link to it, and you can like double check and make sure that like what they're saying in the prompt is accurate compared to what the link that they provide you. As well. So in that search bar that you told us about with the conversation, yeah, is that where I would ask ChatGPT where did you get the data for this conversation, or is that yeah. Is there any more questions? Okay. So another thing that I want to talk about is the types of ChatGPT prompts that you can create. So the first is similar to the different exercises that we have is just providing a direct statement. Um, the second is asking a question. And then the third is a little bit different. It's a role play. So basically what you're doing is, for example, if I um, wanted to be a copywriter, like if I couldn't afford to hire a copywriter and I just wanted ChatGBT to play as my copywriter, I would create a prompt telling them, telling ChatGBT to play as a copywriter and provide them different tasks to do. And what ChatGBT does is it pretends to be that role and like answers based on what a copywriter would do, based on the types of content that you provide and the tasks that you provide for it. So the first prompt that we're gonna first start out with is finding your target audience. And before you do anything or start your social media content, this is probably the, the one of the most important things to start out with. Um, the reason why is because social media is like, I would say social media is pretty saturated. So it can be hard to stand out um, just by providing uh, just a service of what you do. So one way to be able to stand out is to have um, a, a unique positioning and also being able to understand your target audience. You're able to create content that resonates with that specific audience. And uh, being able to create content that is more tailored will help you get uh, found easier. So this is the first prompt. I'm going to read out the prompt, and then I'll explain to you what it means. So the first prompt reads, I want you to act as a marketer for a company name. You are well known for what you do slash mission statement. I want you to create a persona for my business. It should be specific and easy to understand. Also, I know that there's a lot of people writing. So um, at the end of this session, I provide a way that you can send an email to me and I'll provide the slides to you just, just so just so in case if you don't, aren't able to write down everything. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying it for collectively. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then also, if you're not able to uh, finish or you're, if you aren't able to stay at the end of the class, if you just go on STL, L, STL Startup Week, you should see me as a speaker. And if you click on my bio, it should provide my email. And if you just email me, I will send you the slides as well. OK, so back to the prompts. Um, so for company name, the company name is what you do. It's, who, like, it's your company. So if, it is, if it's just you as a person, you can also put yourself. Um, then for what you do slash mission statement, it could either be what you do as a service provider or what products you, you do. And the mission statement, I would definitely include this. I know that not everyone has a mission statement right off the bat, but I would definitely include both because it makes it makes your response or your prompts a lot more tailored and more specific. So for for all the five prompts that I'm gonna be showing, I created a hypothetical business because every prompt 
um, is going to feed off the next prompt. So it would just be easier to have one specific business so you understand how the prompts interact with each other. So for this hypothetical business, it's called Snowy Peaks VR, and it's a virtual reality game experience for skiing enthusiasts. <laughs> and so I'm gonna use this prompt, and I'm gonna put it in ChatGPT. Okay, so we can see, I'm just gonna provide an overview of this persona that we created. And it's basically a hypothetical person of like who we would think our target audience is. So you can see that this is a persona, a skiing Sam. Here are the demographics. Here are the psychographics, goals and pain points, how Snowy Peaks VR can help Sam, and then different key messaging. So one thing to one caveat is whenever you create like a persona or you tell tell ChatGPT to do a certain task, uh, ChatGPT doesn't really have an idea of what a persona is or a, a well-defined structure of a persona. So you'll be getting different structures every time you create a new prompt. So let me first show it to you. So I'm going to copy and paste this and put this in a new chat and then show you the differences. Okay, so you can see like the marketing strategy for Sarah is a little bit different. This one is the same, persona goals is different, pain points, um, and like even like the, the, the way that it's structured, because like the first just says persona where this is a little bit different and then it also has a background. Obviously, like I know that this is getting a little bit nitpicky, but when you have more complex problems or complex things, um, you don't want to rely on ChatGPT to define the structure for you. You would want to do it yourself. And so I'm going to add a, in, um, another part to ChatGPT to this prompt where it basically reads my business is, my business is, and then use the following criteria, which is name, role, problems, pains, and motivations. So this is, so basically what you're doing is you're telling ChatGPT this is my business and you're using the following criteria, so ChatGPT is not relying on its own structure, you're defining the structure for ChatGPT to use. So I'm gonna go and use the same prompt, but then add the second part to the prompt. <coughs> okay, so you can see it's definitely structured to the format that we gave ChatGPT. Okay. Is there any questions? I think the quality is, so whenever you do the paid version, you get access to newer versions. So I have access to GPT-4. Um, and then also you, you also get access to the app integration. So for example, I know, um, for example, like let's say you're a podcaster. I know people who have used integrated Zapier, which is like, um, I would say it's like an app integration where it connected ChatGPT to a Google form, and basically you ask ChatGPT to create a blog post based on the specific people who created forms for the people that you put on your podcast, and it was able to do that within seconds. So like if someone had over 100 podcasts, 
and they've already had like a huge database of all the guest forms, you can just create one prompt and connect, connect the different apps together and it'll automatically provide it within seconds. So I would say like if you're just using ChatGPT with just the prompts, I don't think it's worth, it's like 20 bucks a month. So I don't think it's worth the cost if you're just using ChatGPT by itself. But when it comes to like the app integration and like creating a workflow, it definitely is worth the cost. Okay, the second part is generate content ideas. So the second, I'll read the prompts and then I'll explain what it, it covers. So the prompt reads, give me number of items, co content ideas for company name about what you do slash mission statement covering pains and motivations. So I'm just telling ChatGPT, give me a certain amount of social, like content ideas um, for this specific company and what you do slash mission statement is basically what we did on the last prompt. And then the pains and motivations, it could either be a pain or motivation, but we're using, from the persona that we created, we're using either one of the pains or motivations um, in this specific prompt. So we're gonna go back into ChatGPT, and we're gonna look at the different pains. Um, I'm just gonna put on, take one pain from the persona that we created. So I'm just gonna do the second one. So it reads, as a business software engineer, Alex's work schedule is demanding and often leaves little time for extended trips to the mountains. So I'm just gonna use this time constraint as my pain. So for the second prompt, I'm just gonna put three social media content ideas for Snowy Peaks VR. And then I'm gonna copy and paste this one right here for time constraints. And also with these specific prompts, it does not have to be grammatically correct or it, it doesn't have to be spelled correctly. ChatGPT usually uh, compensates for a lot of these things. Okay, so we have three different content ideas. So the first one reads, and I'm just gonna give a brief uh, description. Um, so the first one reads, create a captain, captivating video showcasing a snippet of the Snowy Peaks VR experience. The second one is create a blog post titled Ski Weekend Ski Getaway VR Edition. Um, and then the third one is announce a launch of a Snowy Peaks VR s virtual ski club via social media, share information about how busy professionals like Alex, which is our persona, can be a part of this club to connect with fellow skiing enthusiasts and plan s virtual skiing meetups during evenings or weekends. So from, from our persona, we were able to understand one pain able to use one pane from our persona and then be able to create three different content ideas from our persona. Is there any questions? I do have a question. So when you started off with the role playing, does it stay that way all the way through or do you have to remind it things in a role play? I would say like whenever you have a conversation, it remembers every prompt after it, so you don't have to remind ChatGPT uh, when you do different role playing. But I would keep in mind um, it def like if you are uh, putting a lot of prompts, sometimes like it may be hard for ChatGPT to remember everything that you put within the initial prompts. So sometimes like when I try to I do role playing, I um, have to remind it a couple of times. Sometimes if it's like probably one of the first few prompts that I used in that specific conversation. Thank you. Okay, so the third prompt that we're gonna do is to create engaging content. So 
from one of the content ideas, we're gonna expand that and create a post out of it. So the third prompt reads, come up with a number word social media caption outlining pains and motivations offered by what you do slash mission statement with content idea using ADA framework. So the first thing is what is an ADA framework? And basically an ADA framework is an acronym and it's, it's a concept or a writing technique used with copywriters to help with conversion. And it is an acronym, um, stands for attention, interest, desire, action. So the attention is usually the attention getter. It gets people's attention. The interest is diving deeper into a pain or something that the audience is dealing with. Desire is how your company can solve the problem or a solution to the problem that your audience might be facing. And then the action is the call to action. So what do you want the audience to do after they read this post? So for Snowy Peaks VR, we're gonna um, we're gonna use one of the pains and motivations as before, and then we're also gonna use the content idea that we made in the last um, last prompt for this specific prompt. Okay, so the third, I'm gonna go with this, the third content idea, which is, uh, which is connect fellow skiing enthusiasts and plan virtual skiing meetups during evenings or weekends. So I'm gonna copy and paste this and replace it with content idea. So I'm gonna read out loud the post, are you like Alex, the busy software engineer with a demanding schedule that leaves little room for mountain getaways? We've got a thrilling news, thrilling news for you. Attention to all skiing enthusiasts out there who crave the slopes but struggle to find the time. So, say hello to the Snowy Peaks VR Virtual Ski Club, designed just for you. Dive into a world where skiing knows, knows no boundaries. With Snowy Peaks VR, you can shred the powdery trails right in your living room no matter how tight your schedule. Experience the rush and excitement of skiing without the hassle of travel. Join our vibrant virtual skiing community where professionals like Alex come together to share the love for skiing. Connect with fellow enthusiasts and plan virtual skiing meetups during evenings or weekends. Finally, a club that understands your time constraints. Ready to carve your path? Simply follow us to stay updated on club activities and upcoming meetups. Tag your skiing buddies who need this in their lives. Don't just let your busy life keep you from the slopes. With Snowy Peaks VR, the mountains are just a headset away. Join the club, feel the adrenaline, and ski on your terms. So just based on one content idea, we were able to create a more in-depth caption um, that is definitely a lot more structured compared to just creating a general caption that we had in the previous that we created. Are there any questions of what we did so far? <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the fourth one, I would say the fourth is how to write in your tone of voice. So with ChatGPT, it does, ChatGPT has helped um, a lot. It has revolutionized a lot of the way that we do things now. But the one thing that it does get slack for is writing very generic content. And I would say that I want to um, create a prompt that helps you analyze your tone of voice so you understand um, how to write in your tone of voice or be able to help you get get you at least like 50% there. 
Um, especially if you are hiring someone else out to do it for you, it can be hard to just like explain to someone your tone of voice. It's a very hard thing to do, especially if that's not if you're not a writer, that's not your expertise. And ChatGPT can help you get there, so you can be able to inform other people and in instruct people better. So uh, this this prompt reads: Please analyze my tone of voice, and then insert medium of copy. So this. This could be copy, like your own copy, but like sometimes people don't want to use their own copy. Some people want to emulate someone else's copy, so it could be someone that you want to emulate as well, um, and you want to use their tone of voice as well. So for the fourth prompt, I looked at a competitor's website, and I'll just read like the first sentence. So it reads, as North American's largest provider of ski vacation packages, we get a lot of questions about everything related, related to skiing. So I'm going to copy and paste this and put this in the chat. OK, so it um, provided our tone of voice appears to be informative, authoritative, and customer-centric. And then it gives us a brief description on like the different phrasings that we've used. Um, I don't want you to, to read everything and take everything. Uh, one one um, easy way to develop on the tone of voice is just to look at the adjectives. The tone of voice, the informative, authorita authoritative, and customer-centric. Um, if you just want to get started, just start using the adjectives that the tone of voice is being described as. So I'm going to add, create a different, different prompt. So this prompt, I'm going to use the adjectives that we have from the last prompt that we created and um, update, update it with the tone of voice. So. I think that you would, so if, if you're asked, okay, I just want to repeat what you said. So um, are you asking that if ChatGPT will provide you of whether or not your tone of voice is good? I honestly, I don't think I've asked that. <laughs> I don't think I've asked if it was a, a good enough. I think like it. I think with this specific prompt, because I didn't directly ask it, it could it could it could say that um, you need improvement. It could not. But the only way that you could um, ask for clearer directions is by you providing. Hey, can you provide me feedback? Is this good? Can you classify uh, the type of writing style that you? Um, yeah. Does that make sense? Yes, I would just like to see if it tells me that you need to do something. <laughs> yes, it would. It would if it was not so good. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so for the fourth prompts, I'm going to use the past adjective that we had. Um, and then I created another very basic. Um, description, so it, it reads, come and hit the slopes for a great skiing adventure. I try to make it as basic as possible so you understand the difference of the tone of voice. Um, so I'm going to copy and paste this. And then I'm just going to use authoritative as the tone of voice. OK, so I'm going to read out loud the caption. As the leaders in the world of skiing, we invite you to experience the ultimate snow-covered thrill. With a legacy spanning decades and a passion for powder that's unmatched, we are your to-go to source for unforgettable skiing adventures. Why choose us? Our experts have carved their paths on slopes across the globe, 
ensuring that your skiing, your ski experience is nothing short of extraordinary. From the charming resorts of the Rockies to the pristine peaks of the Alps, we've conquered them all. What can you expect? How heart pounding des des descents, <laughs> yeah. Breathtaking vistas and memories that will last a lifetime. Whether you're a seasoned pro or a first time skater, we've got the perfect package to suit your style and skill level. Don't miss out on the thrill of a lifetime. Grab your gear, pack your enthusiasm, and hit the slopes with the best in the business. Your epic skiing adventure awaits. So you can see from just one specific um, description or one sentence how the tone of voice can change uh, very differently. It can uh, definitely impact how the caption is provided. Is there any questions? Okay. So the last prompt is uh, creating a content calendar. So I think within social media, um, it's important to be consistent, but it's also very hard to be consistent without having a plan. So one way to be able to be consistent is by having a content calendar, which is basically batching your content ahead of time and scheduling it on a, s having a schedule to schedule out your content. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a content calendar and I'm going to ex read out loud the post and then explain to you what we're trying to do. So the prompt reads, create tone of voice social media content posting table for company name that involves the following for what you do slash mission statement outlining pain slash motivations. And then we have three different columns. The first column is date of posts, and it defines the number of posts that you want to create. The second one is the social media post itself with the content idea. And then the third is the ideal image to describe the caption for the post. So you can see that I have three different columns. Um, what we're doing is uh, think of like a table or an Excel sheet. We're creating an Excel sheet to display on ChatGPT. So when we create this prompt, it'll pr provide like a table for us to showcase um, like the different ideas of posts that we want to create um, for a monthly schedule or a monthly ca content calendar. So I'm gonna copy and paste this. I'm going to use the authoritative to replace the tone of voice. I'm gonna go back and use the pains and motivations from the last. And then I'm gonna go to the columns and copy and paste that there. Right now, I'm just gonna put three posts, and then the content idea. I'm gonna put this and replace it right here, and So right now we created a table of the different types of posts that we want to schedule out. Um, I would say like when it comes to the social media content, I, I think I did definitely go out of place. I would say like planning out your posts is probably the first thing that you should probably do. But being able to have more tailorized, tailorized prompts or being able to understand your target audience um, uh, it definitely helps because learning the tone of voice, the pains and motivations, the content idea, those are things that you would probably need in order to create a better content calendar for yourself. So, yes. Is 
something that can help center power so when you bring them close, you get one button and then she stays to all the outlets? Or is this just for being like the bee with the one button? I think so. If you're just using ChatGBT by itself, I would say that you would have to copy and paste like all the posts and put it into Hootsuite. But I know like as time goes on, um, I think that we'll eventually have a time where there will be an app integration as if, if it's not already created where you can just create the prompts or create the prompts and then it integrates into Hootsuite by itself. I just don't know right now if they can do it um, with Hootsuite. Yeah, there's there's a lot more. <laughs> um, okay. I would, for me, I recommend uh, it's. I think it's new, but it's called Metricool. I can let me just Google it. I found another platform that's adcreative.ai. It's a platform that <coughs> creates automatically generated content for you and you can use that to post it on all your social media as well. Okay, um, also um, if you weren't able to take notes or if you just want the prompts, uh, email me at this email and then with the subject line freebie please and I'll send you, over, send you the slides to this presentation. But that's all I have, so. From the just starting out, I wouldn't worry too much about social media or being super consistent. I would focus on creating quality content first and then being consistent later. Because the more that, like the first focus <coughs> on quality and be able to put that out there. And um, this is a caveat, just because like when it comes to quality, I'm not saying that you have to be as good as someone who's done it for five plus years. Um, and I think that like um, you don't have to like know everything in order for it to be good, but I think it's more of like um, just spending time to make sure that you what you put out there is valuable to the target audience that you want to provide for. Um, but it doesn't have to be like stellar quality content because you're not a social media manager, you're a business, you're a service provider. Um, but then, I would say like if you get good at consistency and you're able to maintain, I would say like three posts a week is usually good for when it comes to consistency. Um, but I think when it comes to maintaining consistency, I would also look at your analytics and see what posts are performing well and what aren't. And if you, it really just depends on like your goals and like how well the posts that you're putting out are doing for your goals to determine whether or not the type of posting schedule that you create. Thank you. Hi, Erin, and hi, Tanya, Julianne. Um, so I have a follow-up question to the young lady in the back who asked, when you have to remind chat GPT, what is it called, the AI, <laughs> chat GPT, um, of the prompts of it being a um, copyright? to the role So my question is, with these five prompts, because you mentioned that sometimes you don't have to just say, okay, hey, remember that you're a copywriter. Yeah. With these five prompts, will we have to do that? Or is this more like if we get really extensive and start playing around and exploring and go down the rabbit hole, that we might have to remind it? So I'll ask the question again. With your five prompts, will we ever have to remind chat GPT that it's a copywriter? I would say like from experience, I've like, some of the tabs that I've created, I still, like I've used it for like five months. So like within that sense, within the five month span of me every single day using those prompts, 
like it will forget. And the reason that I know that it, it has forgotten is because I'm not getting the same type of responses that I was originally. And so that's how I know. Um, and that's why I remind them of like the different types of responses. If you're doing like a couple, um, like I don't, I don't know like the arbitrary number, like let's say it's like 10 prompts for that whole conversation. It'll probably most likely remember um, because you're not also like, because you don't have so many other prompts also feeding it and tailoring the type of solution to it. Does that answer your question? It does. You, you said that they would you said tabs? You yes, so, so like right here, like you can see that there's like different tabs on this side. Okay, I got you. So like every chat is uh, creates a new tab. Okay. <laughs> so as long as I stay within that one, it will continue just having the conversation in that tab in my two buckets of Correct. I would say like like originally, like yes. But like for example, like this converse like different conversations I've had, like some of these conversations, um, I've had like I've had that same tab for like th in a three month span where every single day I'm creating new prompts within that specific conversation. And so like it may deviate compared to like, let's say like I did all the five social media prompts that I had originally, but like let's say I wanna create a blog post, but it's within that same topic and I create a blog post, it may deviate the, the type of content based on the prompts that I provide later on. Got it. Um, but because I know like the different types of prompts that I'm expecting, that's how I know that it has changed. And that's why, that's why I'm like, okay, I need to remind it again and clarify what type of response that I want to get out of it. I think it's really up to you. Okay. Like, if you feel like that conversation, if it's like a lost cause now, mm -hmm. and you just want to start over, like just start over. Okay. Um, but just make sure like you like save the prompts, or like save the original prompts that you have. I know that there's different um, like Chrome extensions that allow you to save prompts, and then I know that the newest version of ChatGPT allows you to save prompts as well on ChatGPT. So like I would just keep in mind to save the prompts that you originally have. So you're, you're not like having to go through all the conversations previously to get all the information that you originally had. Thank you. Okay, so I have another question. How long is your longest chat? And by um, long, I mean how much time? So is it been, do you have one that's been there for five months and it's still the same? Does it erase? Like once you get to a certain point, um, I and I'm using the 3.5 as well. I'm not okay. I didn't make any efforts. Okay. Um, honestly, I, I really don't. I don't think I've a gotten asked that question. Is there a reason um, why you why um, you want to know the answer to that question? Well, you also have Dr. Latin, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what happened was. I was like, I was like, okay, I want to play with this, and then I started down this rabbit hole. As <coughs> apparently, that's a big word with chat GPT. I started down the rabbit hole of, well, what is the writers guild actually talking about with the AI, and it just creates its own content. So then I decided, I was like, all right, well, let's try writing a book. So I've been on th this particular chat with it, um, and I just want to know, like, do I need to export? Do I need to copy and paste it before I lose my content? 
I, it, I think that's it. So okay. like even if I was doing marketing, right, and I yeah. did all of this for this year, all right, well, now I need to go back. Am I copying, pasting, exporting, or is it still there? I think it would still be there uh, unless you delete the chat itself. But I think just for good practice, um, always copy and paste it and put it into a different, um, like Google Doc or any, like store it somewhere else just in case. Um, but I don't, I don't think there was a case where it got deleted or moved, at, like that I know of. But I think it's just best practice to like store it somewhere else as well. Yeah, I think the three point part we cannot say it actually. So once you start a new chat, it has a whole lot kind of automatically deleted. But uh, it's totally can. But in three point five, uh, basically it's copy paste. Last question. All righty. Please give a round of applause to Keith.